Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. It is 36 minutes late, and that's entirely my fault. Um, I was prepping for tonight's game, going, I have an hour. And then I start getting these little Discord messages from all the players going, Hi, are you alive? Do you remember the game tonight? I'm like, yeah, I remember the game. It's in 45 minutes. They're like, or it was 15 minutes ago. So it wasn't it wasn't so so this is the thing right i wish i could say the time zone change completely screwed me around it had nothing to do with the time zone change that has that has happened this entire week here in the uk and all my clocks automatically adjusted themselves so my my ex, th th there is no excuse for time zone change i just forgot that this show runs at 6 p.m gmt rather than 7 p.m gmt which is what all my other shows run on so it's completely on me. This is not a time zone change at all. It's just, it's my bad. So I firstly want to say a big thank you to my players for being very polite and waiting and delaying by half an hour. So thanks, guys. I do appreciate it. And then to all of you who've joined in, thank you for coming in on this weird time. It's like, well, should we wait for the next hour? Should we do this? Should we do that? Let's just play some D&D &D and have some fun. That's the bottom line. And I will tell you this is the worlds that I create in my fantasy settings will never have time zones. And I know that that breaks a whole bunch of intercontinental trade. But you know what? We're using Hollywood time where they don't do time zones either. So let's just let's just do that. So as Saibai is saying, let's kick butt. Um, I agree completely. So now... So, just say all your worlds are disc worlds. That happened. <laughs> They're all just disc worlds they're all just flat absolutely uh and time has different different speeds in different parts of the, of the world okay so yes um folks this is this is us we're going to be playing some dungeons and dragons and uh now if you haven't been following on uh, from the shadows born this is now episode 20 can you believe it and um mm. this afternoon as part of my prep i went and made a playlist of all of the shadow born uh, from the Shadowborn episodes, and you can find that on the YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash uh, great GM live. So, if you want to watch through all of this and see the journey that we've been on, you can certainly do that. But we're also starting a new phase, I would say, perhaps in the adventures. So, if you are just tuning, tuning in for uh, tonight, you're in a pretty good position because uh, the characters are on this. Uh, journey and i think uh tonight it's up to demos to give us a recap of uh what was going on he said you knew it would i even talked about how i wasn't gonna remember half of it <laughs> <laughs> i had a long week all right shall i do it for you then since since i was the one who caused all the delays um, you are it. more than welcome to please take my feet out of the fire all right, all right, feet out of the fire. I will do it very quickly. <laughs> so our intrepid heroes uh, board the ship the wrong way, as they came up with that wonderful, wonderful name. Still proud of it. It's 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 a name. I'll give you that much. It's a name. <laughs> our wonderful crew on the wrong way had just discovered that a submerged temple inside of the uh, bay of madas was draining the life force out of the local merfolk population and being and converting it into some kind of energy beam that was being fired directly out of the bay and into the lighthouse that overlooks the bay now once they had finished saving the merfolk village from being all turned into these weird zombie merfolk th hybrid things they were given a small reward some scale armor which proved to be a little bit of a challenge for some of the characters as they tried to rip it apart and um yes yeah, so so that that sort of happened but our crew our intrepid heroes now find themselves aboard the ship the wrong way and their entire goal is to uh, effectively hunt down a gigantic 
possibly undead kraken thing that has been disrupting all of the shipping and all of the trading that has been happening within the world. Now, I will very quickly show you the world map that we have here. This was done in uh, Wonder Draft and is currently being hosted on World Anvil. So our heroes have started to pinpoint the Kraken attacks. There's the third Kraken attack. This was the second Kraken attack, I beg your pardon. Um, and our crew find themselves here in Madas Bay above the city of Murkos. And they are now considered honored within Murkos for what they did. And so that is where we find ourselves. The lighthouse that they were intending to head towards, perhaps, was Aramosi Kala. Once aboard their ship, they now have had a night's rest, a long rest, as a matter of fact. And we find ourselves aboard the wrong way. <laughs> I still get confused when I say that. The wrong way, <laughs> going one way towards the lighthouse. And that. Had we not reached the lighthouse and we're dealing with the slippery steps and. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. You see, the, so why did you get me to do the recap if you knew I was going to forget the very I was reading it while you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> and see, someone is coming down the stairs toward us. That's right. I have one question right. yes. Is the wall of the cliff to our left or to our right? It is to your left, uh, right, to your right. Okay, thought so. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we're all deploying our weaponry. Um, Correct. So they have <laughs> arrived at the lighthouse. Let me continue this narrative very, very quickly. So, Sorry. yes, they arrived at the lighthouse only to find it at the top of a fairly high cliff. There was a set of stairs incised into the side of the cliff, which they had begun to climb. The stairs were rather treacherous, though, as they were coated in algae and other bits and pieces that grow around coastlines, as one expects. And suddenly they were aware of someone coming down those steps, having then armed themselves. Now, I don't think... Uh, well, I certainly had not written down the order in which you guys were traveling. So can we just go through that very quickly? Who was in the front? I, I think, think it was, it was either Muran or Deimos. Or it was, yeah, I was Deimos. holding Shifty up and he was doing flame stuff to melt the algae in front of us. That's right. You were holding Shifty like a flamethrower. Correct. A portable flamethrower or a living mind detector. More like, more like a flaming yo-yo. <laughs> a flaming yo-yo. I like that better. All right. So it's Deimos. Uh, uh, well, it's Shifty, I guess. Then Deimos. Then I think it was Raj and then Muriel, you were at the back. Uh, Murin, you were at the back. I think I was next and Raj was at the back, correct? Okay. Mm. That sounds All right. good. Perfect. And then Raj, forgive us, uh, folks. It's been a couple of weeks since we last played. I think Demus was whirling me over his head and playing helicopter. <laughs> yeah. That's you, something Demos would do. That does sound, it does sound like something that Demos was going to do. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We have a fairly abusive relationship. <laughs> uh, so there we go. It's, uh, that is that is where we find ourselves as we now return into the world, onto the steps. The sea smashes itself against the rocks just below you, sucking heavily on the stones, slowly consuming the land that it fights in an eternal battle day and night. Above you, a few seagulls wheeled in an eager anticipation of perhaps a meal of eyeballs and cat fur, and the steps of that individual coming down get louder and louder and louder. Are you really flinging Shifty around as a helicoptic point? Yes. So you're starting to spin Shifty around in the Commit circles. To the pit. Shifty, I need you to make me a constitution saving throw. <laughs> you predicted this. <laughs> Is it whether or not I'm going to puke? Uh, yes. Um, that would be 17. 17 you hold you this is perhaps something that you're having fun with uh so so there we go. <laughs> you're having an absolute blast and uh I, I, sorry to wax lyrical but 
just to let everyone know, we've got players from all over the world here, and we've got viewers from all over the world as well. I see Japan has just said hello, hello. So it's just amazing, blows my mind. All right, so you're spinning, spinning him around, and starting to get ready, and 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 it's just absolute chaos as you are doing that. Murin, you've got an arrow knocked, I assume. Yes, and I'm holding my action for any um, aggression. Absolutely, Raj. Raj is doing the same with his light crossbow. Doing the same with his light crossbow. Absolutely. Foot, the foot that comes around the edge of the stone step is particularly webbed and has some rather sharp claws that uh, stick out from the front of it. It's also a bizarre turquoisey color if uh, you could describe it that way. And it splatters as it's coming down. That leads to a fairly long leg, a uh, rather gammy leg, as a matter of fact. It looks like it's slightly infected. And the rest of it is covered in, it looks like a robe of some kind, a very mangled, damaged robe. And eventually the head comes around the corner, and it's basically a set of teeth... And then these very large fish-like eyes. Now, Demos and Shifty, automatically you recognize that this must be a creature that is commonly uh, called a Sahaugan or Sahugan, depending on whether you're Canadian or not. So the Sahaugan mm. is uh, coming around the corner. It has seen the swirling thing and has stopped with its mouth open teeth bared would it it's <laughs> a hard question to ask shifty i will stop spinning shifty so i can ask uh, 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 put him on the shoulder there you go is that teeth thing aggressive which one uh <laughs> the third one from the left Um, guy, what uh, what could I do to assess whether or not this thing insight. is dangerous? Give me an insight check, if you please. <clears throat> insight. Hey, I think I have a bonus on that one. <laughs> we were all giggling and happy. Then a literal eldritch horror stepped around the side of that cavern. <laughs> like, uh, oh, good. Oh, it's on then. All right. 13. It looks more terrified of you than you are of it at this present moment in time. Okay. Can uh, anyone speak to this? I look at it. Then I look at Demos. I don't know at which level he holds me. Uh, this is... <clears throat> sorry. This is... Uh, I don't think it's going to attack us. We, I think it's rather worried than, that we will attack it or him, or her, or them, whatever. Could you make the world stop spinning? Mirren, what are you doing? Are you hearing this? I'm, I'm just aiming. Just aiming. I'm, I don't see any aggression yet, uh -huh. except for the teeth, but we all have teeth. <laughs> and I might be bearing mine, too. <laughs> You're ready for blood. <laughs> the uh, creature sees all of you, takes half a second to register what on earth it's seeing, and then it turns and just runs up the stairs as fast as it possibly can. You can hear the flap, 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 flap of its feet as it slaps up the stone stairs. Could I Killer try and shout after it in, in Aquan? Uh, we're not going to hurt you if you don't hurt us. That's what you shout up. A voice shouts back, So save you! Is that in common or in Aquan? Aquan. Okay. Was that common or Aquan? It was an Aquan. No, I mean, never mind. <laughs> Translation. I, I didn't quite understand it. It said, oh. so says you. Ah. So says you. Thank you. 
Yeah, so I did. So what are you guys doing? It's run off. The sea is below you. There's a soft breeze of salt. Um, I translate to the others, of course. I sure recommend thing. we get up the stairs as quickly as possible. I agree. I saw a puppet show about a guy having to run away from a boulder downstairs. <laughs> All right. You uh, make your way as quickly and as safely as you possibly can, uh, trying not to look down as you get towards the top of the cliff. As you do, however, the top of the cliff has a rather horrific scent. It smells as if there is death all about. That sort of horrific, gut-wrenching, murky aroma of rotting flesh seems to drift in. It's completely incongruous with the site that's before you, which is a grassy knoll. Uh, quite nice. A few low shrubs survive against the winds that blow off of the cliff and the sea salt, of course. Uh, there is a pleasant stream that seems to spring from a, a, a spring here uh, nearby, and that flows down onto the other side of the cliff and turns into a rather picturesque waterfall. And there in front of you is the fairly large form of the lighthouse, a great circular structure that stretches upwards quite an impressive height. It's difficult to tell, but maybe 10, 15 stories high as it goes up and up and up and then ends in this very large glass. It almost looks like a, a bubble, if you like, but with many, many different facets. Uh, in the glass panes that have all been held together by heavy lead. The tower itself doesn't seem to be damaged at all, and you can see that although it is on a promontory of the cliff, its base requires a set of stairs to be climbed up to, but otherwise it seems to be relatively untouched. The, the walls are covered in a whitewash, and the seagulls seem to be flying around, some landing every now and again uh, in amongst the grass on top of this hill, but most of them seem to be paying attention to what the sea is throwing up. I um, quickly squat down and touch the ground. Uh, I'm using nature to uh, see if I can... Uh, see anything untoward there? Ah, uh, 11. What do your elf hands see? <laughs> <laughs> what indeed? Well, on an 11, it doesn't seem to be like there's anything immediately uh, unusual. Although, having watched the flight of the seagulls, you realize that they are in scavenger mode. They're picking at stuff in amongst the grass that is the top of this, this hill. I'll give you a bit of a map so you get an idea of what's going on using the Dungeon Fog map viewer, the map made in Dungeon Fog. So there is the river that you can see flowing uh, downwards towards the edge of the cliff. You have just climbed up. The black area to the left is where you came in from. And uh, this is uh, what you are seeing. The lighthouse is ahead of you. You can see in the distance what looks to be a broken gravestone, perhaps its origin unknown. But that is that is what you're seeing at the moment. Then from there, if I move the camera, because uh, you have field of view, you can see the base of the lighthouse this large rocky promontory, and then the actual lighthouse itself, which is obviously dark inside because you haven't got there yet, but it seems to be fairly intact. But that's what you're seeing. Do we see the creature? Creature. Sorry. Yes. So as you are watching, you see the figure leaping up the stairs and disappearing inside the lighthouse. Okay. He was motivated well, to not stay. Well, I guess we got a river to cross. It's not particularly deep. You can see that maybe it's three foot at its at its maximum. Okay. About fifteen. Anybody want to climb on? I can ford this thing. 
I oh, I think I can get across it. Who's going across first? Um, I'll move. Uh, I'll check the flow of the current. Sure. Make sure I don't get s swept away. Yeah. So ask, uh, do an invest uh, investigation to see if no, uh, no, no. You can tell oh, okay. it's it's at okay. the, it's a, it's a spring source, so okay. it's not strong at all. It's actually quite pleasant, and the water would be presumably fairly sweet. Uh, I'll just walk across um, and uh, hold my arrow ready. Uh, hold my bow ready to knock an arrow. Okay. As you Was... step into the water, uh -oh. at the very top of the tower, a figure opens up the glass pane that has formed the circular structure of glass and lead. And it leans down and bellows at you. Go away! We're done! It's gone! It's all over! I keep walking. The person I start shaking sh Raj's hand and shifting his hand. Like, we did it, guys. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Raj. It's over. Maybe we Raj should shouts make... back. What is done? What is over? He looks down, and it's difficult to hear his voice over the wind uh, because he is still quite far away and very high up. But he, he, he shouts down. You've done your business. You'll have no more luck with us. I warn you, don't come any closer. Why not? Because we'll kill you. Why? There's a moment of consternation where he sort of rubs his hand over his face. Because we said don't come any closer. <laughs> don't worry, Shifty. That was a fair question. Like You should ask why. That's a good thing to ask. Thank you. I just keep walking. Yeah, we're coming up anyway. Raj uh, uses his friend's cantrip um, to give him advantage on uh, persuasion checks. Uh, What's the range? We, we only wish we only wish to to speak with you. <laughs> we we wish nothing else. We wish you no harm. That's what you're shouting up. Yes. Okay. Uh, give me a persuasion check, absolutely. What is the range on friends? Uh, self. Yeah, it just makes yourself more charismatic, I guess. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. I've never played a bard. All right, so you're busy. Uh... So we have a dirty 20 and a 15, so dirty 20. He looks down at you. Wait! I will come down to you! Damn you! Mern, do you carry on walking across? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm joining her. Oh, yeah, you're joining get, her? Okay. Get, oh, yeah. across, get across the water first, at least. Yeah, let's get within, you know, battle map distance. Okay. <laughs> All right, so... Shift, uh, Shifty, are you walking? Uh, yeah, I think I am. Okay, so you're sort of wading through. Raj, you as well? Yes, yes. Well, it, it's not like I need to keep my head above the water, so... No, that's true, that's true. And 5th uh, edition doesn't and, differentiate between salt water or fresh water. Um, and your description of seabolts says that seabolts actually prefer to breathe water instead of air there we go that's true absolutely you start making your way forward and you can now start to see there is definitely a grave that has been uh left unattended and um or at least it's been left so long that it has collapsed by the way <laughs> uh so oh come on where's the token here we go where's murin's token all right so murin you get to the other side un 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 unfazed Deimos, you follow suit uh raj you do as well shifty you're the only one whose head probably i'm guessing 
would bob below the water surface? You said it's th uh, three feet high. Yep. Yep. I'm Afghan submarine. <laughs> As you dip your head below the water, you realize that there are at least four or five skeletons lying submerged in the mud. They look like they could be human skeletons. Can I say anything about how freshly deceased they are? Give me a medicine check. Oh, I'm good at this. He said. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling a seven, adding three, making it ten. They died because of death. Uh. That was the cause. Mm. Yeah. What you can tell, however, is that if there was a shoal of fish around, they could have been picked clean within three days, five days, or if there weren't any fish around, then probably more like a month to two months. Is there anything left about their equipment or something? Any indications of who they were? Sure, I'll come back to you as you continue to investigate. Raj, Mirren, and Demos, do you guys continue to go ahead? Yeah, I'm heading toward the grave. All right, perfect. I'm going to hang back, make sure Shifty's doing it right since he's been spending a little bit of time in the water. All right. I'll, ra I'll just raise my hand with a, with a, with a uh, index finger raised <laughs> above the water. Hey, guys, hold up. I think Shifty's indicating a thing with his finger <laughs> raj what are you doing Raj would just move uh, about to the grave and wait for the, the the creature to come down and speak to him <laughs> all right okay so you're uh, tentatively waiting for the figure to come down and uh, chat with you whilst uh, shifty is splashing about you uh looking around shifty you find one of them his hand or her hand is clutched around an old lantern which has been buried in the mud. Can I free the lantern of the, sure, of the dead sure, hand and, sure. and replace the dead hand with mine? Yes, you can pick up the lantern if I'm interpreting that correctly. <laughs> yep. that, was a, that was a bit the, of odd. The right word pick, uh, picking up the lantern just didn't come to my head. <laughs> Man, good? pounding, by the way. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to pick up that lantern and then wait back on land and show the lantern to them. And uh, look, I found this and four dead people in there. He probably stepped on them. Okay. He's showing you a lantern. They died. Is there anything because... unique about it? It looks to be a rather, maybe in its day, a rather well-made lantern. Um, what does stand out, and this is because of your your um, sailing experience, is the fact that um, it most definitely was a nautical lantern because it can be protected against being submerged in water. It will still remain lit. Hmm. Except this That's one, a good of course, find, the, glass, the glass pane has broken, and as a result, water got in. But it's most likely a lantern that would have been kept by a mariner or um, someone who spent a great deal of time exposed to the elements. But it this can be lantern. repaired. It can be, yes. Okay. Uh... Well, about that lantern, nothing special per se, but uh, the people in the water died because of death. I, I, now it's um, silly, but that's what happened, mm. as far as I can tell. Very disquieting. Indeed. The figure arrives. He looks to be human, um, although perhaps he's elvish. He has a hood that covers his head. His face looks to be quite badly burned across the length of it. And uh, he kind of glowers at you. He keeps his distance, the distance he has now, so about 20 feet. 
What is it that you want? We want to know the, the source of, uh, of this uh, emissions from the lighthouse recently. Uh, we believe that there was a, a death magical uh, death magic coming through the lighthouse. Uh, but we would like to confirm that. Uh, everybody can give me an insight check. Coming up. As you stare at him, he uh, looks at all of you. Oh my god, I got an 18. Nice. The smartest Deimos has ever been. Deimos <laughs> gets the distinct impression that this gentleman has suddenly realized that you are not the people he thought you were. Does he seem happy or sad about that knowledge? He seems cautious about that discovery. Okay. Raj got a 16. You get similar kind of vibes. He, he, he is suddenly going, wait, I thought you were... Oh, you're not! And that's interesting. Who are you then? It's that sort of vibe that you're getting from him. Anybody beat an 18? I got a, I got a one. Sep <laughs> He is totally trustworthy and should be your friend. Uh, absolutely. No, that's that's it. So you guys are getting that sort of reading from him. He uh, takes a step back. You are here to check the lighthouse for dark magic? Yes. Yes, that is correct. And if you find this dark magic, he says, taking another step back, what are you to do with it? Uh, for the moment, we just want to know the source and if it is related to the uh, kraken-like creature that has been disturbing all sea traffic. And hypothetically speaking, if it was related to the Kraken that's disrupting all of the sea traffic, what would you do? Uh, well, we will cross that bridge when we get to it. And if you find there is no necromantic magic in the lighthouse, then what will you do? Uh, then we shall move on to pursue other options. Then I'm afraid you will find yourselves moving on to pursue other options. There is no macromantic magic in this lighthouse at all. Yes, that is because we cut off the energy at its source in the bay. In the bay. Uh, also, we just you... want to confirm this. Yes. And look for clues. Are you working for the Heroes Guild? I'm not. Um, not, uh, officially. not. Not officially. This no. is not a Adventurers Guild mission. This comes from uh, Pythios, Lord Bentaros himself. We're really going to tell our backstory to Lord Bob Evil here? <laughs> he's, he's taking another step back up, his, up the pathway. I see. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start like matching his step, like go step for step when he starts like retreating. <laughs> oh, really? I want, to, I want to keep him in javelin uh, range. How how about you stay a, a, a bit longer with us and tell us the story of the lighthouse? We got rations here and something better than the breakfast we had down there. So how about it, picnic? Um. I no, he says, and turns and runs. Hmm. Well, I'm looking at the gravestone. <laughs> All right. It sounds like we need an initiative here. As uh... Uh, I, I, I turn to ask Shifty, Javelin? He's running. Do what you must. That's an ambivalent answer. <laughs> <laughs> he's running he's making it to the base of the stairs as you're you're thinking can Maybe i put a javelin in front of him you can Maybe try before the bow yeah 
<laughs> yeah, I'm trying not to hit him. I just want to put a javelin in front of him and let him know, you should stop running from us. We have questions. All right. That's what you're going to do. Raj, yep. what are you going to do? Uh, Raj is going to uh, use another cantrip of a minor illusion uh, and uh, make it look like uh, There's a, there is a, trying to think of a, a, a scary creature in front of the door. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So he's, he's going to uh, create the image of uh, an undead mer um, Sahagin coming to attack him from the door. <laughs> okay, that's what you're doing. Shifty, what are you doing? For the moment, I'm going to wait and see what's what's going to happen. All right, and Muren, you are investigating the grave? Yeah, I want to see if there's an inscription on it. All right. So, Demos, I need you to make your attack roll, if you please, as you throw this javelin towards the fleeing form of this individual. That would be a 21. The javelin lands directly how far ahead in front of him do you want it to be? I want to kind of just stop him in his track, so maybe a couple feet in front. All right, he stumbles to a stop. Hey! Then your illusion goes up of this undead Sahagin standing in the doorway. He looks at it and he simply says, Don't just stand there! Get them, you idiots! And then he tries to step around the javelin to continue towards the undead Sahagin. That's what he's shouting. <laughs> Great. Well, that sounds like permission. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like what? <laughs> so he sort of stepped around your, your javelin. I, I look up at the, uh, Demos. Shall we go ballistic? We shall. And I will pick shifty up and hurl him okay javelin thrower hurling him at the fleeing form at the bad man to make sure he doesn't get into a fortified position yeah 30 40 that's a 50 foot throw you can move forward i guess i mean it's well we'll go in this is a surprise round for him he did not expect sea balls <laughs> No one expects the sea balls. No one expects sea balls. <laughs> right? So you're going to move forward your 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 30 feet then to sh yeah, throw I'll... shifty is easy. He's 10 yeah. 20 20 feet or so. You're going to you're going to give him a, a throw there? Give me a strength yeah, check. Yeah, shifty knows what to do. Uh, athletics check actually. Come up. Mm -hmm. He's getting to the base of the stairs. Nineteen. Nineteen. Shifty, you glide through the air. You need. To, uh, how are you trying to land? As a, as a bear. Yeah. As a graceful, dexterous bear, or just as a bear. I'm trying to to, before impact, turn into a brown bear and tackle him. Okay, give me an acrobatics check as a bear. As a bear. <laughs> a roly poly bear with claws and fangs and fur and fear. I just figured it's like a hairy guy named Tom from Philadelphia. <laughs> 15? Uh, I'm, uh, 15? I'm All right, you, you, you land. Your bear lands heavily because it is now a 300 pound bear. You take two points of damage from the bad land, unfortunately, because of the distance that you were thrown. But you certainly can now launch and make an attack against uh, this individual uh, for you. Can I just try and and pin him to the ground, tackle him? Yes, uh, or, uh, sure. Grapple, grapple, grapple absolutely. check. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Twenty-one. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my goodness yeah that's gonna be my 12 you just slam into me he's like no 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 wait and bah, this bear slams into him raj what are you doing this whole thing sort of demos took a few steps forward and just threw shifty in the air and then bear and then roar and you uh, are to, re to really to really get his attention uh, Raj uses dissonant whispers to give him some emotional pain. <laughs> so he gets a wisdom 13 saving throw. He rolled a natural three, so he ain't going to get that one. Okay, so he is going to take 10 points of psychic damage. 10 points of psychic damage. Copy that, gold leader. All right. He screams <laughs> out in pain. No! Wow! What? Wow! All right, Murin, you're investigating the tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> As All the kids are busy playing in the yard. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so before the launch happens, the tombstone, which has been smashed over, says, to my beloved wife. And then there is a name of Eleanor. Hmm. We get attacked by undead ravens. I'm blaming you. Okay. I look up and uh, I've got one action, so I'll just start walking over toward where the guy is being pinned by a bear. <laughs> He's not going anywhere. All right. You start making your way over to him. He, uh... I'll put my bow away. Oh, my God. We just Shakespeare'd this guy. He just exited pursued by a bear. <laughs> <laughs> He is he is lying there. He's rolling around. He's like, I, you obviously don't know who I am. You, you monstrous thing. And um, he's definitely going to try something, which he fails. So he sort of waves his hands around, and you can see puffs of smoke trying to come out of his fingers, but nothing happens. He's like. I can't concentrate when there's nonsense going on. Just hold him there. Shit. Actually being stood right on by there. a bear and having a hideous series of maddening whispers in his yes. brain. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I just raise lightly like and then with both paws pin his hands to the ground and just <laughs> him in the face. I got spit in my mouth. You're hard! He's screaming, and is everyone else making their way closer towards him? Oh, yeah. Yes. I won't be running oh, as soon as I throw the kobold. Okay. The bolt, Raj, you catching up with them? Yes, yes. All right. He's under the bear. He's like, all right, fine, fine. Uh, I surrender. Just get your whatever the hell it is off of me. Uh, quickly. Uh, I take out the belaying pen. I've heard this story before. Stay right there, Shifty. I, I surrender! Just to be safe. That's fine. You said that we don't know who you are. Well, who are you? Uncomfortable is what I am. So Your name I was looking so for. I am Melfakir the Great. Just Have not I ever yet. heard of him? No. Have I ever no. Malfakir the Great. Well, unfortunately, I haven't heard of you. That is your ma mistake, not mine. It's my lighthouse. I was given it. So go away. We don't Who want to steal it? your lighthouse. It's, it's, it's a building. Right. We just want to look inside. Make sure also, everything is there. up and up. Right? It, so will you give us a tour? Uh, I guess I could. And we promise not to hurt you if you don't hurt us. And also, uh, 
forewarning, do not send your undead minions at us. I did notice your reaction when you saw one before. <laughs> undead minions. <laughs> You're so funny. Um, I have one undead uh, assistant, um, but he came running in shouting that there was a problem or something. I, I don't really recall specifically. You just want to see the top of the lighthouse? I want to see the entire lighthouse. This would this would be an excellent thing to to do. Yeah. We're going to search your lighthouse and if you mess around I'm going to cut your head off and then I'm going to feed it to the bear. Does that make sense to you? Are we doing diplomacy? This is diplomacy. Yes, right. Well, if you would just get your bear to back off a bit. I Why, would, is the I, unbearable? Now look him deep in the eyes. Do you want me to laugh? No. Then yes, he is uh, heavy, and my head hurts like awfulness. That was only a small sample. It can get much more painful. Oh yes, much more painful. I swear I surrender. I'll you show go. you the lighthouse. We don't need to fight at all. Mm. I thought you were robbers, that's all. Can I see if I believe that with an insight check? Um, You can give me an insight check. You can. Everybody who's watching him, which is all of you. Eighteen. Seems legit. Four. <laughs> Thirty twenty. Oh, Mirren and Raj. Thirteen. Pick up that. He's he's planning something. He's trying to be like a cunning villain with a cunning plan. Now that he's caught in a trap, but you're not entirely sure what that would be. Okay. Um, put me right up next to him. And I'll say, "Hey, Shifty, you can you can get off him now," and I'll uh, I'll help him up and I'll make a fuss over him, you know, you know, brush off his clothes, check his check his face, go, "Oh, that's a nasty burn." Oh, well, and then I'll force my arm through his, you know, like this. Yeah, Shifty, okay. are you getting off I'm first? Let's go. just check. Are you are you going to back off first, Shifty? I do. You do. But before All right, I do, yeah. I lick him across the whole face, bearing things. <laughs> oh, nice! I always wanted that. Oh, and, and, and as you're brushing him down, no, there's yeah. really no need, madam. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm quite capable of. Right. Yes. Okay. Good. Yes. And I'll put my arm through his. Okay. Show this lady around. Yes, of course, absolutely. Oh, so my axe is in my and, uh, I'm, I'm sure it's always drawn. And I'm a. Uh, I'm gonna. A surreptitiously frisk him to see what he has under his robes. Not there, but so you're gonna <laughs> yeah. sleight of hand check him as all right, go for it. Give me a sleight of hand check. Yeah. We'll oh, see how this works. Terms surreptitious. Like you could openly frisk him. Let me see, that's a dirty twenty. <laughs> nice. He doesn't realize you rifling through his pockets. He has you can feel a few things. Um something feels like a fairly large key. There is definitely something that uh, feels like a slightly twisted tube or something in a satch in a in a in a side um, bag that hangs from his belt. It's about a foot in length, and then in his other pocket he has a rather small but fairly heavily bound book. That's what you're kind of getting off of him. Shifty? Being a bear, I'd like to use my fine nose mm -hmm. to see if there's something that smells bad. It's awful. There is an actual awful, awful, awful smell. He smells a little bit of death, but there is a much stronger smell of death around blowing in from the, the sea, which is to the south of where you are 
Um, so if you look further down, there is a, a the scent seems to be wafting in, and that's of fresh decaying meat. Not a good smell. It's not oh. a good smell. I I just shake, and uh, I try to point in the direction where this, uh, the smell comes from. Point at my nose, and then. Which is difficult for a bear who's on all fours, sort of doing this. It's, yeah, but nonetheless, <laughs> that's what you're seeing him do. What is it, Rose. boy? Timmy in the well. <laughs> right, so, let's get into this lighthouse then, shall we? So you might want to take that tubu uh, that tubular thing, the whole sack. My wand. Why would you want my wand? So you don't try No, to I don't it. tell him this. I was going to lift it. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were saying that out aloud. My apologies. No. My apologies. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, sure. I we got a actually... dirty 20 yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. You, of hands, you, so I you, figure why not? You slip the clasps of his his um, bag without him noticing at all. He is too busy looking at this bear making poor gestures at itself. Okay, I'll hang that on my belt. And All right. okay, let's go. I think. So tell me, tell, says, tell me, who who gave you this lighthouse? Uh, the uh, who do you think gave me this lighthouse? I do not know. You said you were given this lighthouse. Yes, the you previous occupant gave it to me. There are three corpses in the river over there. What do you know about that? They probably drowned. No, so he confirmed dying from death. Yes. Perhaps. Now, did you want to see the inside of the lighthouse? Or do we want to talk about the causes of death of people who work in a lighthouse? It's a very risky business. I'm starting to... Oh, the so they worked for you. you. It didn't work for me. I mean, look, it's complicated. In the time, shall we just go in the lighthouse now? And I have taken over. I am the new lighthouse marshal. But what happened to your face? That is a very personal matter. Thank you, madam. Burn, I guess. And I will thank you to keep your opinions to yourself. Now, are we going in, or are we staying out here and chatting about our personal childhood traumas? Can I gag him? <laughs> Every time he talks, I want to cut his head off. <laughs> uh, I, I believe that you are not being straightforward with us. If you would like to avoid further pain, you will be more forthcoming with the information that we are asking. Besides, telling the truth is easy. Remembering your lies is difficult. <clears throat> I've never had a problem with... Fine. Yes. Okay. The truth, he says, as he sort of pulls on his, his jacket. This territory of Utherios was successfully invaded by a legal army, and thus the lighthouse has fallen into the hands of the, the conquerors, as by right of war and conquest. And I was the one who led that conquest, so the lighthouse is mine by that right, which you cannot deny. And who is this entity that the, the conquerors... Uh, the ent you mean who do I represent? Yes. Yes. I, Melkor the Great, <laughs> I represent the unifying force. String theory? Not that nonsense. I represent the actual unifying force. The greatest power that this world will ever know. Or not know. <laughs> 
But that's not you, important. You keep saying evil sounding things. I. It is not evil. Just me. I, Our master will reshape not... everything in the correct way. Oh, you mentioned the master. Raj, we know that we know of the master, don't we? Wait. Yes. I'm keep fucking up your plans. Sorry. The master knows me very well. You know the master? You could say that. If you're here because... I don't understand. If you are working for the master and I work for the master, then surely... Why are we fighting? Exactly! I believe that will be a big mistake on your part. He kind of scrutinizes all of you. I'm going to need a collective deception check. All four of you, because all four of you know that this is not entirely true. Although you might suspect that Raj actually is working for the master. We're not entirely sure on that one, I will admit. Uh, all four of you, you need to collectively get above 35 in your, your deception. So give me your numbers. Deimos, what did you get? Not fun. Sorry, Deimos? I have a minus one to deception. Oh, wow. I rolled an 18. That's 17. 17. All right. Muren. 19. That's good. That's already, that's more than enough. That's fine. Shifty. 22. Pack of lying thieves. Raj, what did you get? <laughs> Raj does the worst of the group with only an 11. Right. 69. Okay, more than sufficient. If you had just said that you were working for the master, then we would have... Oh. Seriously. Now, unhand me, since we're all on the same side. And you really haven't heard of me then? He didn't say anything to you? No, not a word. But hang on a moment. Yeah. If you're coming here... Well... His lordship only left the other day. I don't see why he need to come back. Did he leave something behind? Please direct all questions to the cat man. He looks at you, Raj. He has been very secretive. You know how the master can be. Yes, but then why did he send you here? Uh, to, to perhaps to check up on you, to see if you have been... Deceitful. Why would I have been deceitful? I have done everything that he has asked. The lighthouse is ours. It has performed exactly as he has spoken and said that it would. I have summoned the beast whenever I have seen ships in the bay. It is, then the creature has performed adequately. It's not my fault that that idiot has stopped providing me with power. No, you want to go to Murkos. You want to go and speak to the necromancer. That's who you want to speak to, not me. Ah... Uh. Well, Demos, do what you need to do to secure the person of interest. What do you mean, secure the person of interest? Done. It's a rear naked joke. <laughs> he does, he's at this point completely Please. disabled. Yeah, don't kill him. I won't. I, this is a knockout movie. Just put front around the yeah. neck and then push the head forward and they go unconscious after a few seconds. Yep, I've seen that. <laughs> Thank you, United States Army training. <laughs> yep. Thank you very much. You have given, you have done very well. He gurgles once or twice and then passes out. Bind his hands, bind his feet, bind his feet to his hands. Gag him. <laughs> he is a little ball of gagged and bound person. I made him into a man purse. <laughs> hey, so Raj. Pick him up for one hand and walk out with the luggage. Hey, yes. hey Raj. I, uh, I nipped this off his belt. And I hand him the package with the wand in it. We don't have to identify it now, but... You know. When he's also a got bunch. a... He's also got a book in there. Yeah, I'll pick yes. it up. 
when he, we have about 10 minutes, we will, I will use a ritual to identify yeah. the wand. Uh, let us take a look at the book and see if there are any useful. Sorry, I think I dropped for a second. <laughs> yes, you did. All right. While so while they uh, they do all their stuff, I'd like to uh, pad in bare form past uh, the entry of the lighthouse and look in the direction where the uh, where the smell of death just came from, and maybe they in the hope that they'll pick up on my body language. As you circle around the tower, you come across two very dead bodies that look as if they were thrown from the tower itself and oh. splattered on the rocks below. One of them is wearing the tabard that uh, signifies them as a lighthouse keeper known to 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 you as a sailor. They're... they're usually very independent, isolated individuals, very tough-minded, strong-willed. But yes, he lies dead at the uh, base of the tower. And then the further figure, you're not entirely sure who they are, but you do notice that around their neck is a little flake of bone. It uh, looks as if it has a number inscribed upon it. <laughs> Okay. Um, my inner sea bold self is revolted by by this view. Yes. However, my bare stomach starts grumbling. <laughs> <laughs> I pat towards it, and before I let any natural urges of the bare form come over me, I shift back into into my good old self. And I'd like to uh, investigate a bit more, especially that that uh, necklace of bone. Sure thing. All right. That's what you're doing. You guys are casting rituals on this side and uh, having a, a, a look. Uh, Demos, are you hanging around whilst the ritual's being cast? What are you doing? Uh, I can weigh them down with rocks or something while they're doing it. Okay, sure. Muren, are you staying around while Raj is uh, casting his identify? No, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna pick up all the interesting bits off the off the guy's clothing, out of the guy's clothing, and sure. give them to Raj. Um, I wanna. I wanna go to the entrance of the lighthouse. Absolutely. So you get a small book, Raj. It's you don't even have to cast identify. It is definitely a spell book. <laughs> Um, there is no question of that. Not a particularly expensive one, not a particularly good one either, and a cursory glance through it, you're not entirely sure what's contained therein, but it doesn't look like it's particularly complicated magic, if you like. And then you start casting your spell. Uh, to be real quick. Identify. Let's the switch cam cameras quickly. Yeah. So that's everybody off except for Murin. And then Shifty, Demos, and then Raj. There you go. Boom. Sorry, guys. I don't know what happened. My computer just suddenly went, nope. That's all right. That's <laughs> all right. So that is what happens as you uh, are investigating. You're casting your spell. And so, Shifty, you find that necklace around the neck of the more desiccated body. And very finely in the back, it says the Adventurer's Guild inscribed on the back uh, without, without in any, any indication. And the number that is written on it is 45. Ooh. That is the number. Do, oh, okay. do the I number. recognize the sign of the, of the Adventurer's Guild? Well, it's written in common. So, yes. Okay. Yeah, you can you can you can tell pretty much. Then I'll collect that one and I guess I'll have to climb down to the other. If you want to climb down to the uh, lighthouse keeper, you can. Abs absolutely. It's not difficult. It's not a very high cliff. So yes, you sort of scrabble down. Or bef before I scrabble down. Yes. Um any equipment on him that's interesting? 
this particular individual. It looks as if he's been picked over, to be perfectly honest with you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, aside from that necklace, nothing too interesting to a druid. No. Okay, then I'll... Climb down to... Just... Uh, no, before I climb down, I'll get... I'll head those 10 foot northwest. Around the very edge? No, 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 the other way. Northwest. Oh, okay, yes. And tell the others, I found a dead adventurer. Raj is deep in incantations. Deimos, how do you react to that? Is he moving or dead, dead? Dead, dead. Okay, necromancer guy. And he's got uh, a number. Raj, you got this? Raj is canting and his eyes are doing his little cat thing and he's possibly purring. Uh, 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 Demos, uh, during this time, uh, Raj is elsewhere and uh, don't disturb him because you might take him out of the ritual. No, so not, not jokes. <laughs> yeah, I'll head over to Shifty. All right, you're going to head over to Shifty. Uh, you see the same sight that Shifty had seen before, the dead bodies. And uh, it's as obvious to you as a sailor as well that the one on the ground floor is the keeper. He seems to have been dead for quite some time. And the one closest to you uh, definitely looks like he had the trappings of a hero of some kind. Um just by the way that he landed on the ground, it looks like he landed like a hero as well. Unfortunately, he just, he, he stopped like a hero too. <laughs> Tried a hero landing. Bad for the knees. Yeah. So I'm going to look over William of Defoe and Robert of Pattinson. All right. So you guys are going to go over these two. Absolutely not a problem. You uh, start to look through them. Raj, your identification spell goes off and you were trying to identify his wand. Is that correct? Yes. Absolutely. So his wand, well, it has magic in it. Principally, it seems to have the transmutation magic, I think. I stand to be corrected, but it does have a transmutation spell cast upon it. It is a wand of light. It will bring forth light upon command. Okay. Uh, does it we have charges that's uh, the that's the nice thing about this one it doesn't seem to have charges this the the the, the 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 spell light is such a weak incantation you look and as you are looking at this this wand you realize that it's possibly slowly consuming the wand every time the light spell is cast but given the way that the stuff has been wearing off, you probably could cast it easily 300 times before this one runs out of, of uses. Okay. Nice. Good find. That is what you find. Having searched through the two corpses of the lighthouse individuals, the only thing that you find on the lighthouse keeper, apart from his torn tabard, which indicates his status, is a little pendant around his neck. It looks to be a locket of some kind, uh, made out of a fairly robust um, silver, which has greened in time, but uh, it does pop open, or it seems like it could pop open. Do you do that? Which one of us has it? You can choose. You want to do the honor shifty? I pop it open. Give me a willpower saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. Sorry. Wisdom saving throw. You did that on purpose. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wisdom saving throw. Yes. 22. Nice. Deimos, give me a wisdom saving throw. Knew it. <laughs> Luckily, wisdom is my second worst score. Ah, very good. Got a whole plus zero. Look at that. It's my best. 19. Booyah, 19. 19. Fantastic. I love this new dice. There you go. So both of you get this very vague 
sense of something brushing up against your very soul. As that locket opens, you get a shiver as if suddenly cold. And it hits you first, Shifty, and then it seems to bounce onto Deimos, and then it's gone. Inside the locket is a rather badly painted illustration of it could be a handsome young man and an ugly young woman, or a very ugly man and possibly a pig? wearing a wig you're not entirely sure it's 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 one of those cheap little cameos that would have been painted as sailors you know this in any dock anywhere in the world you will find some painter or someone who claims to be a painter happy to paint the portraits of young lovers uh, as the one is embarking upon a sea voyage for a small fee of whatever gold they happen to have left on them so that they might remember their one true love and all that kind of stuff. And frequently we'll paint over the previous portrait that was painted into that locket because, well, sailors and, you know, the wide open sea and, uh, you know, love changes from port to port. I'll but never forget one... you, hideous Bertha. <laughs> so, so this is the lo uh, locket of the divorcee? This, well, since it was around his neck, you suspect that it was whoever was in this portrait if it is him the other would probably be a loved one to haunt him judging by the effect of of what who happens knows? when you open it who knows who knows Should we bring this to raj since we just you know released yeah Vol probably probably but we should not keep him just identifying stuff old and old over again that's true. It'd make him feel like a one-trick pony. That'd be rude. You're right about that, Shifty. Mm -hmm. All right. We should bury them. Murin, whilst yeah, these two Yeah, maybe have... later once we've secured what, whatever's in, in the lighthouse. Yep. <laughs> All of this is going on around you. You get to the lighthouse door. It's slightly open. Okay. Well, I will deploy my sword mm -hmm. and kick it in. Inside, you the door, see... not the sword. <laughs> Inside, you see a rather tired-looking tower with a central staircase running up and up and up and up and up. After a good thirty feet, you can see the floor or the underside of what would be a floor of the next level. So it isn't thirty or forty stories high inside it's maybe got three or four levels inside but with large ceilings stretching all the way to to the next level all right wrap thing okay i'm uh looking at this growth to the right of the door my it's right of the door giant spider webs no one has has looked after this place at all there are a few ruined crates but these white uh, tendrils are fairly Fairly large, very well, well made spider webs. As uh, a cartographer, you can give me a nature check. Oh yeah, that's real good. Um, Eleven. You suspect that these may be the webs of the Rick. Rikan spiders. The Rikan spiders are a particularly large species of spider known to inhabit the uh, jungle or the woodlands, I should say, of the area that you were originally from, as a matter of fact. So if I cut back to our map and we go from Aramosi Kala, we go north, further north, all the way north, up to uh, the Hydeens Main, all the way up to here in the Equitari Solar. These Rikan spiders are quite a threat since they will frequently consume baby centaurs hmm. if caught unawares. All right. Um... Are these recent? They do have that wonderful pearlescent sheen of freshly spun web. 
Hmm. Okay, I won't go in just yet. Good, okay, it? I will um, back out and say, hey, we got some potential spiders here, spider action here. Oh, Raj gets very excited. Uh, finally, I can use my short sword of spider slaying. <laughs> yes. No. You What's have so that? bad about spiders? I mean, they are all. all all I've seen are usually this big. Well, um, uh, these particular spiders have been known to eat baby centaurs. That's awful. That's yep. so we, sad. Yep. We, we had the baby hunt centaurs. Hmm. Poor little ponios. Yeah, we had to hunt them, you know, but. Baby centaurs or spiders? We hunted the spiders so they'd stop ah. eating the baby centaurs. They could swallow you pretty easily. Is that a so, helpful sentence? Cool. Or is that just, uh, you making fun of his height? No. It is. Just I'm just. They, uh, I'm just uh, laughing that he thinks spiders are this big. <laughs> <laughs> I I rub my hands. I will soon be able to turn into a new shape. <laughs> there is enthusiasm there. I like it. The weather, however, is starting to take a rather dark turn. You can see brooding out, 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 out in the ocean like some kind of teenage girl who's been denied going to a dance. Angry, twisted, and dark. This great, great thundercloud is starting to get ready to launch its attack. It is probably at least an hour and a half away from reaching the cliff, but when it arrives, it threatens to be quite, quite a titanic deluge of water and rain and lightning and thunder. Okay, yes. well. I know it's working. Uh, yep. Quick, quick question. Is the wrong way anchored? properly and far enough, far enough uh, away from, from the cliffs to not be in danger? Thankfully, if we return to our map and we go all the way back to Madras Bay, the wrong way is anchored on the uh, leeward side of this promontory of rock of the Amorosa Carla. And mm -hmm. so most likely the storm will slam against the arm of Aramos, as you can see here, and it will be windy, it will be gusty, and there will be waves, that's for certain. But Madas Bay will offer some protection for the wrong way, uh, provided that uh, Captain doesn't make a silly mistake and try and flee the storm. Oh, boy. These spider webs have been spun recently, so I think there are spiders in residence here. I mean, we've got bait. Raj, what are you doing whilst everyone Let is us, talking? I'm about this? standing at the door waiting to go in. <laughs> Let us uh, take our new tour guide and uh, move inside. Yep, no, tour back now. Back. All right, so you got him on your back. Who's going in first? I can. I, I, yes, Raj, knowing, hearing about the spiders, pulls out his sword and goes in. You're going to let oh. Mirren go in first, or are you going to sneak in first with your sword? Uh, of let, let Mirren go in first. I will follow behind her. That's a safer approach. Mirren, you step into the. Uh... Uh, I'm going to. Ooh, that's where I step in. Okay. Well, that's through the doorway. Or, well, there okay. would be through the doorway. Okay, yeah, I move to the left. That would be uh, north. To the crates, yeah. Yeah, and I'm just looking around. Ooh, I see a spider. There's a spider in this one. So you're looking at the webs, and there are bits of spider that have been left behind, but they don't look very big at all if anything it's possibly these are the corpses of the original spiders that used to live in this lighthouse naturally oh, um, 
The threads, however, wind around the staircase and head ever upward. All right. Uh, nothing's jumped out at me yet. Do these webs seem connected when they go up the stairway? Like You would have to step inside one. to see that. Yeah, I'll, I'll be following. As soon as Raj goes in, I'll follow him. Okay, so yes. Raj, you going in? Yes, I will go in. Uh, uh, go in a step uh, to the side, just beyond Mirin. Uh, to the side, this way? Yeah. All right, you're kind of looking around. Shifty, are you going to let Deimos go in first? Uh, yeah. All right, Deimos, you're taking the body in with you. It's getting a little yep. bit cramped in this doorway. Are you going to go you somewhere? You guys want to move a little forward? So I'm huge. Come on, guys. Yeah, so you're going to go okay. down? Yeah, I'll just I'll head around. All right. You can give me an investigate check. Shifty? Coming up. I give the investigation No, check. no, no, Deimos. Oh. Okay. You're going to head in as uh, well? Yeah, sure. All right. That is a uh, 17. The, the webs are so intertangled, but it is fairly obvious they definitely entwine all the way up the stairs. There's no doubt about that. I think Ever. it is time to wake up our tour guide. There's also a second option. Tell me if this is a hilariously dumb idea, but it might actually achieve two purposes at once. If we set fire to the webs and they burn upwards, as you know, fire does, we might be able to take out the big spider and light the lighthouse all in one go. We would just have to leave, you know, quick. A cursory glance upwards reveals not only the spider webs all the way up to the next floor, but the base of the floor, it appears to be made out of heavy wooden timbers. I think this would destroy the whole thing and all of the evidence. That's a good point, evidence. Yeah. Yes, that is my only concern. We must learn what is going on here. On the other hand, he already told us where we might find out more. We killed the guy he told us about. And uh, oh, this, yeah, right. uh, no, we handed him to the merfolk. Uh, also, this uh, lighthouse is very necessary. So I would, I would not agree to destroy it. Fair enough. Wakey, wakey. <laughs> you sort of slap him Shame. around. And uh, he opens his eyes. Oh, what? I thought we were on the same team. Damn. Where the hell are we? He says. He's also gagged. He doesn't say any of that. <laughs> Fine. <thank you. laughs> well, that's what Sorry. he's saying in his head. He's going. <laughs> <laughs> I will remove the gag. As you remove the gag, he immediately starts going. <sighs> <laughs> oh, 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 what are you, are you insane? <sighs> now, for this tour of your lighthouse you were promising us, tell us about your spider friends. That is exactly the problem, he shouts and goes, <sighs> oh, blast this! As he's blowing... It looks like he's trying to whistle. Oh, gag back on. <laughs> Hold his face. You want to stop doing that. He goes very quiet. And there then all of you start to hear a sort of chittering sound. Yep. Yep. And How many are there? You starts to wobble and shake. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. yes. And all he does is he looks at you, Deimos. <coughs> and we'll be back next week. Oh. <laughs> I was going to chuck him up at the webs on the next floor. There you go, buddy. <laughs> 
yeah, so that is that is where we are. Sorry, folks. Uh, we are over our time, uh, or just on our time, I should say. And uh, yes, it is It is what it is. I love the timing that you guys allow me to have. I must admit, everyone's like, oh, we knew it was a cliffhanger. We knew it was coming up because they're watching the time, obviously. It's like, it's not my fault. The players, you guys trigger it perfectly. You're such a dramatic group. It's really cool. Um, so yes, that's where we are. Thank you guys for playing. I do, again, thank you for your patience and understanding uh, in, in staying up a little bit later for me than usual. I appreciate that. I really do. We will definitely see you next week at the correct time, I should add. And, Which um, is? The right time. Uh, <laughs> the time in which it is streamed. Exactly. Exactly. No, at 6 p.m. GMT. We will see you all next week then. Those of you in chat, if you want to stay around, I will do my post-game review, which is just about half an hour long, where I talk about what I had planned for today's session and what actually happened and whether we're on track or not. And uh, that'll be taking place in about five minutes. But I'll bring up a counter for you. So, guys, thank you so much. If you are Halloween celebrators, happy Halloween coming up. And uh, I hope you enjoy it in a safer way as possible, I suppose. It's all been impacted, hasn't it? And uh, yes, to everybody who has tuned in from around the world, I uh, did that shout out. We've had people from Japan. We've had people from all over the States, which is lovely. We've had people from Denmark. It really is fantastic to get everybody together. Uh, to yeah, well, there's fun. somebody from Iraq. Uh, yeah, that's right. Iraq or, or Iran. That's correct. Yes, absolutely. Um, so that's that's absolutely fantastic. So wherever you are, we hope that you stay safe. And uh, I'll be back in a few minutes for that review. We'll see you then. Until next week. Bye. Bye.
Okay, and I am back. So there we are. Hello, everybody. Thanks for watching this evening. We had uh, quite a big uh, crowd tonight. So if you are new to the show, welcome. And uh, if you are new to watching this post-game review, uh, it does contain spoilers for upcoming uh, plans and plots that I have. But the intention is that you can see what's going through my head in the hopes that it will help you, inspire you, or at least show you that you're not the only one who has to make up stuff on the fly as your players do weird and wonderful things. So yes, let's jump straight into it. If you do have a uh, question, please put the word question in caps in front of your question so that uh, I can then uh, see it quite clearly and then we will jump into it. So yes, let's see where we are in terms of those questions. We'll kick off with those first, I think, and then we'll go from there. Captain Priceless says the attire. What about the attire? Oh, the jacket. It's got cold here. Uh, it, it, I don't know. Tonight's cold. Usually my studio is boiling and I'm I'm sweating and all that kind of stuff. But today I've been I've been working hard behind the the computer making maps and and all that kind of stuff. So I just got nippy and I was like, well, I need something to wear. This is an old jacket that I used to wear for one of the characters that I used to to use in the. Uh, youtube uh, channel um as as a thing that we were doing at the beginning of the year so i think it's a pretty cool jacket it's kind of like a steampunky tentacle kind of thing thank you wish.com uh for that i think i have had this since last year as a matter of fact uh battle mac 3246 as uh, dan c very appropriately pointed out the music was custom written for us by darren curtis from DarrenCurtisMusic.com. He writes uh, amazing music and has actually written all of the music for most of the live shows that we do here on the channel. Really, really enjoy his music. Um, Sheena Tiger says, question, is the master a Time Lord? No, no, he isn't. Not yet, anyway. Uh, we'll leave that there. Uh, Captain Price says, have you watched Wakfu? If not, I recommend it. If not, at least to get the vibe I'm trying to get with my timing. Uh, so, no, I have not watched Wakfu. Not entirely sure what that is. Uh, Dancy says, what was behind the gravestone? Well, you know, and uh, Saibai says, what was the wisdom save on the locket? The two are linked together. So I very seldom will make a adventure that has a simple single kind of outcome and usually i like to add in little things into the adventures that will get people to sit back and go huh this is nothing to do with the adventure at all but it has to do with creating a real world to create that immersion so eleanor the poor woman who had died and been buried er eleanor the player's might discover if they search through the lighthouse more thoroughly, although I suspect they may not, uh, in, given what's going to be coming up. Eleanor was the wife of the uh, captain of the lighthouse, and she died tragically, leaving the, the lighthouse keeper all alone. He, of course, had the locket around his neck. He uh, did not necessarily accept, however, the fact that uh, she had died, so he always kept her close to his breast. And um, yes, he uh, when when the locket was opened, her spirit, which has always been nestled next to the heart of the uh, lighthouse keeper, tried to invade the mind of the nearest entity that it could. So it tried to get into the Seabold's mind, failed, then tried to get into Deimos's mind, failed. And then there was no one around for the next 30 feet in all directions. And so, sadly, the spirit has not got anywhere to go. And so now there is possibly, depending on how evil I might feel, a seagull who has been inhabited now by the spirit of this woman who wants justice for her husband because, and this was, I hope, fairly obvious, the lighthouse keeper was thrown from the top of his lighthouse by this Melkor the, the uh, Great. Melkor the Great threw the lighthouse keeper off of the lighthouse whilst he was claiming it uh, for his master. And um, so he died. So her spirit was trying to seek vengeance for the murder of her beloved 
husband. Once that is achieved, his spirit will be laid to rest and then she can depart as well. So when I do this, it's a, it's, I don't want to call it a cheap trick. It does take a little bit of setup. There is no guarantee that there would ever be a payoff simply because the players might never investigate the diary of the captain and find out about Eleanor. They might not put the pieces together and they might not follow the path that is led anywhere. I won't specifically do anything more on this little sub-quest type of thing, simply because it's a throwaway and it makes the world feel a little bit more real, I guess, or I hope, anyway. So that is the idea. So Grizzles, that answers your question as well, um, the reason for the silver locket. If they had failed, as a matter of fact, then the spirit would have entered the mind of one of them and simply begged them to seek revenge upon the murderer of her her um, husband. Now, there was a part of me going, well, if this succeeds, that's brilliant, because then the party would have been told that this Melkor the Great was the one who had thrown him off of the lighthouse, pushing them even further into knowing that Melkor the Mad is, or the Great, I should say, is actually evil. Now, that's an interesting situation that I came up with there um, insofar as the party did not react the way I thought they had. Again, I'm constantly surprised by these guys and I absolutely adore it. Deimos was like, well, he's absolutely Bob Evil. We have to kill him. And everyone else was like, no, 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 no. We're going to talk to him and we're going to find out. What that did was that completely disarmed the entire situation. Again, wonderfully so. There are on the map, which um, I can't show you because the setup is wrong, but on the map of the lighthouse, um, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 14, 15. There are about 20 undead skeletons, which if, if the party had not bear tackled quite literally Melkor, he would have caused the, the, the 20 skeletons to rise up and attack the party. If the party had not convinced him that they were both working for the same master, he would have summoned these undead. He may still get an opportunity to do so. That was his cunning plan, by the way. There was at one moment where they were trying to see what he was saying, trying to interpret what he was thinking, and they, they, they passed their insight checks. And I said, he, he looks like a, someone who's come up with a cunning plan. And his cunning plan is basically to allow them to investigate the lighthouse. And they're going to find, sadly for them, and this is a spoiler, so I'll do a thumbs up if you don't want to hear this particular piece of information. But what they're going to find at the top of the lighthouse is they're going to find the remains of where the Orb of Life was located. Now, remember, if or for those that don't know, there are, I think it is, eight orbs that each represent a circle of the universe. And in an adventure previously, again, spoilers, uh, young Raj lost the Orb of Death to the Master, and what they don't know is that the Orb of Life has been stolen as well. And it was drawing power from the necromantic energy to raise this kraken. Now, they had a very surreal encounter with the druid Kenku at the top of the cliffs earlier on, where the druid was saying, life has left because that kraken was dead. The Orb of Life brought it back to life. But once the master had achieved his goal, once he had achieved his plans, he took that orb away from the lighthouse and thus the kraken was no longer being sustained by it. The light was still shining, that's the little wand, but it was no longer keeping the kraken sustained. That's why it was starting to die and eventually it was going to get, uh, it is dying off because the party may or may not still have to face it. Now, this depends entirely on how they react to the Orb of Life information that they're going to find out possibly next week. They will discover the fact that this orb was there because there's going to be an impression burned into the stone where the flame of the lighthouse is normally kept. So the orb was getting incredibly hot as magic was being channeled through it and an impression of it was made which should give Raj, at the very least, a link back to the circle of life and possibly a return to the monastery from which he originally started this adventure to discover that it has indeed been stolen. 
If this doesn't put them on the right path, that the orbs are being collected and they should now start to try and hunt down the remaining orbs, then I will have to bring in a mentor NPC who will start to give them this kind of guidance. To be perfectly honest with you, I'm not entirely sure what they will do. I suspect they will take this necromancer, or whatever he is, back to Pythios, the capital of the southern reach of Utherios, and hand him over to Lord Venetris, who will then give them the boat and their rather handsome reward. Whether they choose to then follow this path or go somewhere else, I don't know, and I will have to see what they are willing to do. So that is that is what's coming up now. Well, sort of what's coming up. They've got the spider fight that's going to happen. Now, what <laughs> Melkor the, the Great was trying to do was whistle. He had trained the spiders to react to whistling. If he could whistle, he would have caused the spiders to stand down. But he was very rudely gagged before he could actually whistle. And so the spiders are going to attack with abandon. They will try and consume everybody and anything. So next episode will be a giant combat episode. And I hope the players are ready for it. They've been itching for a little bit of a fight. And so there we go. It's, uh, it's going to be... I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Once they've defeated the spiders, they'll get to the top of the lighthouse and then find the ruin and remain of that. So there's a question again from Dan C saying... Um, the why did the master take the orb away so if i look at my notes over here um okay da, 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 da. i'm still going through my notes here oh yes he has taken the orb away because he got the orb of death he managed to succeed in getting that orb of death a few weeks ago. He now has the two orbs. He no longer needs that orb of life. He no longer needs the Kraken to be attacking and destroying his enemies. He is also aware of the prophecy. And so he was trying to sink, using the Kraken, any ship that was approaching from the south because he felt that was part of the prophecy. So he is... trying. He was trying to cover his tracks, basically. But by the time he got the orb of death... He no longer needed the orb of life, and so he took it away. And so that has allowed him to move forward, basically. That's his That's his plan. Anyway, hopefully, that's, that's kind of what's going to come through. Uh, the players won't ever find this out. He won't ever do a giant monologue. And then I took the orb of life away, and then I did this, and I did that. But he took the orb of life away because he now wants to secure those two in a place. If we go back to our very original plan, which I don't have with me at this moment, but we can talk about it next week. If we go back to the original plan, the orbs are now, he's going to start combining those orbs to create truly, truly terrifying monsters and things. And so that is where we're going to, to, to head into in a couple episodes time. We're not there yet. Um, Grizzle says, what happens when they bring the tags from the rank 42 adventure? I think it was 45 to be absolutely honest with you, but it doesn't matter. They'll bring the rank 45 tag back. There's a small reward for returning the body of, or the, the tag anyway, of an adventurer to the Adventurer's Guild, and they will note that he has perished. They will also complete, possibly, the Kraken adventure, which will only, I think it's Murin is on level 50 because she's only just signed up. I think she signed up. I can't remember exactly. Um, I'll have to ask her. And uh, Raj will certainly shoot up in rank as well, quite possibly being elevated to quite easily a rank 40 or even maybe even a rank 30 for taking out that Kraken. There will obviously be some kind of repercussion because, again, I feel that this is important in terms of making that world feel like the, the, the world is living, is that the Adventurers Guild will say, hang on a moment, you started out as a level 50 only a few months ago, and now suddenly you've rocketed up killing this Kraken. We need to know who is this person, why are they so powerful, and why have they hidden their talents for so long? We need to figure that one out. So there is that. Um, then a question was uh, from Dan C., another good question. What is the storm that was coming from the south? Think about that for a little bit. The characters were standing outside of that tower in a circular argument going on about whether they should do this or whether they should do that. None of them were actually going to go into the tower. Now, the whole cliffhanger joke kind of thing 
I do the cliffhanger for the players more so than I do them for you guys. I know that some of you enjoy those cliffhangers. And as part of my job as the Game Master, it's all about setting pace. So if they are stuck in this circular debate and they're not going anywhere and it's like blah, 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 blah. I created that storm because it's it happens. Storms happen at sea. The storm is merely an indicator that they should get moving. The rain is going to start coming through and there is going to be an effect. Now, what I did really like is that um, Shifty immediately picked up on that and was like, oh, I hope the ship's in a safe place. I really like that. That is someone who's thinking about the real implications of seeing a storm out in the ocean going, OK, well, we have a ship and that ship could be in peril. So I like that investment from his behalf in terms of, of responding to that. I thought that was really good. And it did like that. So the storm was quite literally just the GM going, all right, enough debating. You guys aren't making progress in your decision making. Let's move forward. Let's move on and let's get going. So that is the that is the idea. Um, yeah, I did. Uh, the Adventurers Guild did say that if he killed the undead Kraken, he would only advance by one because that's how the guild works. Having said that, though, if you think about it from a... A, a PR perspective that's what you do as a guild because you don't want every adventure going well I don't want to be a level 50 adventure I'm going to take on a level 40 adventure and try and jump the ranks all that's going to do is lead to needless death the reason why the ranking system is there is to prevent young adventurers from going off and killing themselves trying too hard a mission uh, to, 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 to do having said that though unless the organization is run by very blinkered people if someone like Raj, who was level 50, goes off and kills a Kraken, that's an individual with an incredible amount of power, and the guild gets a percentage of all of the, the income that is made. So that means that guild is going to be going, you should not be tinkering around with level 48 adventures. You shouldn't be killing crabs on a beach somewhere. You should be out there slaying wyverns that are threatening kingdoms that get paid a big amount of money so we can make our commission off of that. So... That is that is just perhaps my cynical nature in terms of how the world works in real life. And so I apply that to to the organizations in the fantasy world. They want to make money. Again, going back to to something that I always apply is what does this person want to get out of it? And that applies to the guilds. What do the guilds want to get out of it? They want to get money out of it. They might have been started as a, originally a way to save the kingdoms and make everyone safe. And then they realized they were making a bucket of money and wanted to make more money. That's that's the usual case. Follow the money train uh, and you'll you'll usually find it. What did Mel call the 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 great want? What does he want? Well, the the master said to him, you will raise the Kraken and cause havoc and sink every ship that approaches from the south. That is what I want. Um and so he moved into the tower. He murdered everyone there, like the savage little psychopath that he is. And when the master said, I have the orb, you can... He said, well, what do I do with the tower? It's yours, Melkor the Great. Take it. Playing on his little ego and all that kind of stuff. So, And I don't think Melkor would have had the foresight to even, even anticipate that someone would try and come and take the tower back. So when the adventurer arrived at level 45, he did then have to kill him. So there you are. Um... Okay, let's see. Let's see. Um, Dan C., another question about the Adventurers Guild. Would they ever rise to rank one or rank two? Yes, if they keep on doing missions for the Adventurers Guild, the players are investing in the Adventurers Guild. They should be rewarded accordingly, which means that they'll start to get perks, bonuses, but also the Adventurers Guild will start to come to them and say, <clears throat> we need you to go and deal with a dragon, if you please. Now, I never intended the Adventurers Guild to become a railroading players. You have a quest that you must do because you're high level and it's expected of you. Uh, so I wouldn't do it too often, but I would have that in my bag as an adventure that I could give to them if I needed to slow the speed of the campaign down or something along those lines. Nick Schwartz says, what term would you give the storm plot wise? Do you have a few of those ready to go for various situations? Well, as far as I'm concerned, the, the, the storm is just a pacing thing. It is a pacing device. If the players... Let me have a sip here. If the players start to slow down, you as the GM need to start pushing things to move. And you can do it in a few ways. You can have a monster attack. 
you could have the floor collapse, you could be dramatic, or you could be a little bit more subtle and say, well, the candles are starting to run low. You'll have to light new candles if you want to carry on talking throughout the night. Time is a good thing to place onto the player characters. And a storm is just a, well, if you're still out here while the storm hits, you're going to get wet. And it's going to be miserable and there's going to be lightning bolts flying around. So I suggest you move inside. And more savvy players, those that have watched my channel, will go, okay, so he's trying to, to move us in. But hopefully if the player is at that level where they're going, okay, the storm is a, is a timing device, is a pacing device, they would also, I beg your pardon, they would also go, well, yes, we have been going in a circle, so let's move the story forward and let's let's move forward. So, so there we are. Um, and Nigel Gregori says, uh, hey, this is my first time watching one of your streams. I quite enjoyed it. Thanks. Well, thank you for watching it and staying for 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 the post game um, deb debrief as well. Um, so, yes, that's the end of tonight's show. I think we've kind of discussed it pretty much uh, in terms of, of uh, where we are and what needs to happen next week. Hopefully you will all be here next week. The show starts half an hour earlier than it did this week. I missed up on that time. So if you enjoyed the show, come and join us again next week. And uh, we will be going on the second part of the adventure. Until then, uh, the only other thing that I should uh, let you know is on Saturday, we have our live sessions with a GM. That's me for an hour answering your role-playing questions about your role-playing games. You can uh, come and ask those questions. Same channels uh, an hour later. So that's at 7 p.m. GMT. You can join me for that. And we talk about all kinds of things. And I have a guest on as well on that particular show to talk about something pretty cool, which has been floated around on the channel already. So we have a guest on that one. The week after will be creative writing. I know they got a bit mixed up, but guests are available at certain times. And so I kind of grab them and, and make the most of that. All right. So if you haven't yet seen uh, where to join us, discord.gg forward slash great GM. Our Discord server is quite active. Or you can find us on Twitter at great GM. Um, sorry, not that. It's at how to GM, I should say. I think that was our handle. I never remember the Twitter handle. Uh, we made those all in the days before everything was unified. Anyway, until until we see each other again, however, I wish you and yours the very happiest of gaming. Oh, my God.